So as I said in my last video, if you wanted me to do a tutorial about how to make these little pins, um, then I would show you. So there's two types of pins here. The first type are the bobbins that have got a little mini bobbin on, wrapped around with some floss of your of your choice, probably something that's going to match your project. And then there's another type here, which has just got some beads on it, which just makes a nice coordinate coordinating pin to go with one of the bobbin ones. So if you want to make these, they're really, really simple to make and you don't need very much kit and none of it's particularly specialised. So you're going to have to forgive me because I'm trying to see the screen and do the tutorial at the same time. So my hand's going to be popping in and out and I am in desperate need of a manicure. So please don't look too closely. So the first thing that's most important you're going to need are the pins. Now, I've had lots of questions already asking me what type of pins. These are hat pins. So they're nice and long. I think they're about nine centimetres long, these ones. Um, and they've got a little ball tip to them. The longest pins that I would find that I would call sort of normal sewing pins were only about four centimetres long. So they were much, much shorter than those, which may work depending on what you want to do with them. But I wanted something a bit longer. The other longest pins that I could find were pins that were used either for corsages or for um, hairdressers. And they were about five centimetres long, but they quite often had a very big fancy tip to them, either a big pearl or something glitzy on the top there, which I didn't really want. So you need those. You need some of these little bobbins. Now these are just little mini craft bobbins. The pins I bought on Amazon, they were about £8 for 20 of them. These little spools were about £3 um, for this and the ones that I've already used. So they come in three sizes, the tall, the medium and the small. And these have got a bit of a, a sort of a finish to them already. You can buy them sort of completely unfinished. So you could either put some wax on them or you could... Um, you could paint them if you really wanted to. I like the fact that they've got different sizes um, and I think all three sizes work on those size of pins. If you had shorter pins, you'd probably only want the really small ones, otherwise the scale would just be, just be wrong. And then the other thing that you need are some little beads that you think you might want to use. Now, most of those are just for decorative purposes. But these are the most important ones. You need to have a bead that you're going to use that has a hole which is small enough so that it's not going to come off the end of the pin. But the bead is big enough so that it's going to be the one that's sitting on the top of the um, bobbin or the top and the bottom of the bobbin so that it's not going to move about. So I picked out these little... Um, silver ones from my collection you might have a little glass one something like that that's just going to do the same job you need some floss which is probably going to be the easiest thing to find just something from one of the projects that you're working on that you want the pin for and then this is the glue that I use um, basically if I can't do it with without with Gorilla Glue then I, I tend not to do it. I don't have a hundred fancy different glues around the place. I, I tend to go for super glue every time. Um, and the reason I like this one is because it's got a brush in it. So I get the super glue brush and nozzle from Gorilla Glue. So I'll show you how to make them. Really, really simple. I'm going to make a slightly bigger one to start with. So all you need to do is take the little cap off, but don't lose it because you're gonna need that again in a minute. Um, I hope this is focusing okay. So take the little cap off, put on one of your beads that are gonna play the role of the stopper. And then what you need to do with your glue, again, I'll try and keep my hands out of the way for the most part, is just put a bit of glue on the inside and just a little tiny bit on the outside. So I'm not painting the whole of the bottom there, I'm just covering 
where the hole is and then the other place I'm going to put some is just on the underside of that bead okay and then you pop that on and you want to make sure that it's kind of sitting off the camera there it's just kind of sitting in the middle okay now I've already managed to get glue on my fingers and slightly further up my pin but don't worry about that we'll sort that in a minute and then what you need to do is the same thing sorry see if I can hold it so you can see it the same thing but on the underside and you don't want loads and loads of glue and then just put the bead on there we go and again you can see I've managed to stick my fingers to it and just center it because you want your pin to sit straight now, you need to leave that to dry. I found the best place to leave them to dry is to put the little cap back on. And then I go to my, put it back on properly, go to my kitchen cupboard, the ones that hang up on the wall, and I open the door of the kitchen cupboard and then I trap it in the kitchen cupboard at the top so that it hangs upside down. So I'm going to leave this one, go and leave this one to dry and then I'll show you how to make a couple of others. So let's see if I can do a better job of keeping my hands out of the way this time. So this time I'm going to do one that's got a couple more beads on it. So these are going to be my stopper beads this time. And I think I'm going to use, I think a medium sized one will work. So again, pop one bead on and then with your glue now you do need to be careful with the glue you can get it off if you make a real mess of it but you do need a little bit of um, acetone to do it with so it does dry clear but it's nicer not to have it everywhere and then I'm going to pop that one on there and again I'm going to try and make sure that it's sitting nicely and I've stuck my finger to it again. Same again with the bottom, oh, too much glue there, sorry, just put a little bit of glue around there, slide the bead on. and center it so that it's going to to dry i'm actually going to put one extra little bead on i think if i can get it to go i didn't check the size of the hole on this one it might be too small yeah it's too small i'll leave it off i'm just going to do just leave it with those two and again put the little cap back on and then go and suspend it from the kitchen cupboard. I'm going to do one more, just this time with beads, no, none of the uh, little spools. So I've got this cute little bead, which is a toadstool. So I'm going to put that on. In fact, I think what I'm going to do, because this is quite tight already, so I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue on my actual pin just to make sure that it's going to stay there and then I've got a tiny little stopper bead so with a tiny bit of, gr uh, of glue on my brush sorry I'm going to just put a little tiny bit on the bottom there push my bead on this one I know fits because I tested it and then make sure it's square in the there we go and then 
pop that on and then go and hang it from the kitchen cupboard. Okay, so I've got this one back because this one's actually dried more quickly than the other one. Um, I did have to put a little bit more glue on the other one. I didn't put quite enough to hold the hold the bead in place on the other one. So that's just drying. That's another reason why I use the Gorilla Glue because I am that impatient to wait for stuff to dry. So the last thing you need to do, sorry, is to get the floss from the project that you want. And again, this is why I like the Gorilla Glue with the brush because you're just going to brush a little bit of glue around here. Now he doesn't need much but I always make sure that I do a good bit around the bottom because that's where I want to try and put my end before I cut it off. So this is the hardest part to actually put the glue or to put the cotton on without actually sticking your fingers to it and then all you're going to do is as neatly as you can wind the cotton or silk in this case around now you can spend time making this really really neat and then at the bottom where I put my glue I'm going to try and end my floss okay now I've got a little couple of little gaps there so I'm just gonna fettle it and smooth it all out and then just leave that to dry I'm just gonna leave it to dry with that little tail on and then as soon as it's dried properly I'll cut the little tail off simple and really pretty obviously without that tail. Let me go and get the other one because it should have dried by now. Here are the other two. There's the little um, one, the little toadstool, all fixed. And then this is the other one. So I'm going to do the same thing again. And just put a little bit of glue around this one on the top or on the bottom should I say and just a little bit on the top as well and then I'm going to take my take my floss which I've managed to get a little knot in just trim that up that bit start at the top somewhere near the top Press it down without sticking your fingers to it and then whichever way is easiest just wrap around like that. Just check you haven't got any gaps. You can do it more neatly than me. I don't mind them a little bit higgledy piggledy actually. And then aiming to finish somewhere near the bottom where I've got that that glue. There we go. Just press it down. Now, if you've got a little bit where you want to finish, but you're missing a little bit of glue, you can just add a teeny tiny bit. Put the glue in. I could have been a little bit more careful there with the glue, but it will dry. It will dry. Just hold that where I want it to sit. And then I can trim off. Oops. Trim off where I want it to be. and sit it down neatly you can once it's dry you can fettle it a little bit more than that so there's that one here's the blue one which just needs a little trim 
and again you can fettle it to make it look super neat and then there's the little one with the toadstool now if like me you have managed to get glue on the pins themselves you can just get a little bit of acetone so you probably need to get it from a chemist rather than the supermarket because most of the nail varnishes are acetone free but if you get just a little bit of acetone on a cotton pad then you can just clean any excess glue off the pin. Now it's clear, so most of the time you can't see it, but sometimes you can feel it. Oops. There we go. It's not much on this one, I was tidier on this one. There we go. I'm just going to put these back on because they are super sharp. Now the one thing to remember with these is that they are decorative pins. They're not, well, this particular pin isn't really for a counting pin. Um, the hat pins are much thicker than normal pins. So again, that's something to think about as well. If you're putting it into the top of a drum that's maybe got stitching on, um, you might want to think about where you're gonna put it. Or if the top of your drum's just fabric, then that's gonna be fine. So there we go, three nice little pins to go with my other collection.